Hey, you probably have heard the story of Samson. Samson was a walking, talking, real-life action hero of biblical proportions. This guy was a stud. And his story is in Judges, and we're going to look at Judges chapter 16, but his story really starts in Judges chapter 13. And that's where an angel shows up, and an angel announces his arrival and tells his mama he's going to be born. So you know he's big time when an angel kind of gives a birth announcement. That's a big deal. And, and he is is to take a Nazarite vow from the time that he is, is born. And what that means is that he, he can't have any alcohol, no haircuts, can't touch any dead bodies. He is to be set apart. He is to be set apart for God. He is to be set apart for a special job, a special mission. And, and Samson is like the stone cold beast. He tears lions apart with his bare hands. He kills a thousand Philistines with a donkey jawbone. He, he was a beast, and we always kind of picture him as this, this big jock, uh, you know, just this muscle-bound bodybuilder stud. But I have a theory. I kind of think that, that Samson probably looked pretty normal, maybe even a little wimpy, because people wondered about the source of his superhuman strength. And if he had looked like Captain Steroid, I don't think they would have wondered, but, but he... I think he looked normal, and so they wondered, where does he get his strength from? What is the source? Because here he is, he's, he's Superman without colored underwear. But Superman has a flaw. Superman has kryptonite, and, and Samson has some real serious personal kryptonite. The strong man had a big weakness, women. He was completely controlled by his urges. He was completely controlled by his hormones, and, and it cost him everything. He, he crushes big time on this sketchy girl named Delilah. And Delilah will go down in history as one of the worst girlfriends ever because she's trying to get a secret. She's trying to sell him out, and she nags him and nags him and nags him until he finally gives up. And, and Samson's potential is wasted by his compromise. He confides in the wrong person, and he wastes his gifts, he wastes his ability. He's supposed to be set apart, but instead he gets set up and sold out, and he loses everything. He loses his strength. Because Samson had lived for the immediate and not the eternal, he was willing to compromise. Because Samson lived for the right now and he didn't think of the future, he was willing to compromise. And he did with Delilah, and it was a sad thing. The saddest verse in the whole story is verse number 20, and it says this, But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. Compromise numbs us to the presence of God. We don't realize that the Spirit has left us. He didn't realize that the Spirit of the Lord had left him. He gets up and he's ready to fight again, not realizing that he had no strength. It's a really sad story. But... Okay, two verses later, there's a glimmer of hope, and it says this in verse 22. But before long, his hair began to grow back. The strength was slowly returning, and God gives him one last chance, one last chance to, to, to do something legendary, and he really brings the house down. <laughs> Look it up. Uh, he does, and, and Here's the lessons that we can learn from this story. First thing is this, live set apart. And that's not about isolation. It's about intention. It's not about avoiding people. It's not about thinking that, that we need to live separately from people because we're better than them because we're not. It, it means set apart your heart. Set apart your life to the Lord. Live for Him. Don't compromise. And you probably shouldn't tell your biggest secrets to sketchy people. Don't do that. Live a life that is set apart. Live a life that instead of sold out. Live a life that, that doesn't cause you to get set up. Think about the future. Think about the eternal and not just the immediate. And see what God can do through you. Giddy up.